Hi, this is Michael Moore reporting for Tech Week Europe. I'm down at Info Security 2015 down in London. I'm joined by Dr. Hugh Thompson, who is the Chief Technology Officer at Bluecoat and also a Chairman of the RSA Conference and a Lecturer of Secur Cyber Security at Columbia University. Hugh, thanks very much for being with us. Hey, Michael, thanks for having me. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much. Um, so you're obviously down here with Bluecoat and you guys are presenting some research, is that correct? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very interesting time in security. So we recently released a report that we teamed up with YouGov to do, and it was a study of how people behave on the phone, online, through email, and through social media, and would they be willing to give up things like their password? Would they be willing to give up things like their date of birth, something that an attacker could potentially use against them? And the results were fascinating. I think we've always known that people are the weakest link, right? It's almost a cliche in the security world to say that. But for one of the first times, I think we've gotten really interesting empirical data on how weak that link actually is. Okay, and you found some interesting differences between genders and age, is that correct? We did, yeah. So one of the things that we found is the newer the medium, the more likely people were to make mistakes with that medium. So take social networking, for example. People were much more likely to share information like their birth date, the name of their favorite pet, things like that that attackers could use against them. But in old school communication mechanisms, things like talking on the phone, people were much less likely to share that kind of data. So that, that goes for everybody as a whole, but then it's interesting when you start to look at the age differences. So younger folks, millennials, tend to be more cautious with these types of mediums, and folks that are, I'd say, of executive age, those folks, less of them are on social media to begin with, but those that are on social media don't behave in an incredibly cautious way. And I think that's a, a very interesting uh, set of facts to get our head around when we're thinking about protecting a corporation, defending data. It, it definitely pulls out how we have to have compensating controls to deal with the inevitable mistakes that employees will make. So you just mentioned controls. So what's to be done to improve this? Is this an education issue? Is it pure kind of naivety on terms of the employees? Who has the responsibility here? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't think this is a problem that we can fully educate our way out of. That being said, we did some research also on how much education companies were giving their employees just on what I'd call cybersecurity hygiene. Turns out not very much, actually. Um, it, it's interesting. I'm from the Bahamas, and we're, we're, we're a small country. But even we run full-page ads in the newspaper in our local dialect telling people not to click on links in Facebook, right? Is that working? Is that desensitizing people to those kinds of attacks? I don't know, it's hard to say. But what we do know from this study is that more education needs to be done, but in spite of education, we have to have controls, things that protect the link you're about to click, for example, and technologies that actually look at what's on the other side of that link and insulate it from the user, that's one. The second one that I think is really important is we've learned that we have to plan for failure. If, if this study teaches us anything, it's that people will make mistakes inside the corporate environment. So we have to have mechanisms in place to recover quickly, to diagnose what's happened on the network very quickly. It's just a part of what modern information security is. And you mentioned education there, obviously you hold a fairly prestigious post at Columbia University. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and how that affects your role with Bluecoat? Yeah, sure. So I, I, I used to teach a class um, called Cybersecurity and Exploitation, right? And, you know, it's interesting to have the word exploitation in a, in a course title, which made it very popular, actually. But it, it, it was all about how do systems fail mm. and how can you get them to fail? And almost always, if there's any system that has any level of complexity, there's an, a way that an attacker or researcher can look at it 
that was never designed or never thought of by the creators of those mm -hmm. systems. So that's what the class was all about. We explored the social human side, we explored the technical side too. And one example that, uh, that comes to mind, which was mind blowing for me, is often software developers use these developer help support forums. So they're places where you can take chunks of code and post them online to the community and say, hey guys, I'm having a problem with this code. Anybody have any ideas? Do you know, do you know what's going on here? Uh, usually you get terrible advice, by the way, from these forums. Uh, but we had one of our students write a source code vulnerability scanner, and it's amazing the amount of vulnerable code that gets posted that you can then track back and find out what company the poster works for. Mm -hmm. Again, from a security perspective, it now tells you as an attacker that I know this vulnerability exists, it exists inside this company, and it exists inside this module. So there's a, a, a lot of open questions at the edge of social media, collaboration, and security that I think we're still trying to feel our way through. Okay, great. And finally, um, obviously we're here down at InfoSec. Uh, what are you hoping to get out of the conference and what do you kind of see being the main security trends over the next 12 months? Yeah, it looks like a great conference this year. Obviously, security's in the media every single day. I think there's a couple of big issues that'll come out of InfoSec. One is how do we deal with encrypted traffic? Mm. Right, there's been a lot of discussion, GCHQ, others have talked about the implications of encrypting traffic, moving things to HTTPS. I think the biggest issue now is if you're a company and you've invested heavily in network security controls, how do you responsibly decrypt the data to look for dangerous things while preserving the privacy of employees? So that's, that's a question I know is going to linger here at, at InfoSec. The other one that's very interesting too is how do we recover from failure? So if there is an attack, if somebody is successful, how do we get telemetry on that attack? How can we do forensics quickly? And how can we get to a ground truth of what happened in that attack? So we've moved very much as an industry around this response notion. How do you respond? And I think those are going to be two big questions. So there are a lot of others. It's going to be a good conference. Hugh, thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the show. Oh, I've nice. been Michael Moore reporting for Tech Week Europe.